obviously you've taken part in a lot of openers, um, mostly against really good teams like this one. Um, does anything change over the years from just the anticipation of it or, or anything or is it just another game at this point? Mm, well, I think the first start in 2008 was a little different than this one maybe. Um, and then I think the eight, the 19 one was probably a little different too with a new, uh, new system. Uh, those ones felt a little bit different nerves-wise. The 2011 one after winning the Super Bowl was probably the most fun and special. Played the Saints, uh, you know, got off to a really fast start, um, held on for a win there. But uh, yeah, we've done pretty good. I think we we're 10 and three in my time at opening. So who would that get beaten by? Seattle, San Fran, and San Fran again? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've played some good teams over the years for sure, opening up. Um, but uh, this would be different, obviously, not playing in New Orleans and um, with some of the changes on their roster, most notably the quarterback. Um, definitely have a different feel to it. Speaking of not playing in New Orleans, I guess there was a report down there that said they picked the state of Florida because apparently they think you're not as good in the state of Florida. Um, what do you think about playing down there? Uh, yeah, uh, Tom you actually showed me that report as well. Thank you, Tom, for the uh, useless information like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I did hear something Tom just mentioned actually, uh, some about Expedia and checking flights. And if that's true, hey, you know, good for them, trying to get every little advantage. I would assume, based on when we played in Jacksonville the last couple times, There'd be a lot of Packer fans there. So even still, you know, not playing in New Orleans um, with that crowd noise back to back years is definitely uh, nice. Seems everyone is pretty darn comfortable with Elton playing left tackle. What does he show you not only this preseason, but in his time here that makes you so comfortable with him filling in for Dave? Yeah, I think it's just a mentality, a, a way about him, very easygoing. Um, I asked him. I don't know, maybe a month ago, I said, uh, what do you feel most comfortable at? He said, shoot, it don't matter. <laughs> I said, no, seriously, like, is there, you know, left guard maybe? Or uh, you played the most there? He said, no, nah, it don't matter. You know, I think that's, uh, that's kind of the way he is. He's, he's just an easygoing guy. He's played well at every position. You know, he played right tackle for us, left guard and center, and now left tackle. He's a... He's a very versatile guy. I'm sure, you know, at some point he's going to maybe focus on one position that might be able to be the most lucrative down the line. I think that'd be smart for a guy of his talent and ability. But uh, he, he can do it all. Uh, you know, he can he can play left tackle. He can play inside. He can play center. That's that's a luxury. It doesn't happen around the league very often. Aaron, one follow up, to that if I can. He talked about last year in San Francisco. He actually put his hand up. I think with Adam to play left tackle when Rick went out. Do you remember what was going through your mind there when Elton played over there and just how well he filled in considering it was a spot he really, I mean, really even repped at? <laughs> it's always nervous when that things ha those things happen. I remember uh, a couple games where we lost our tackle or tackles and um, just a lot of faith and trust. Uh, with Chad Clifton over the last couple years, he was with us every now and then. You know, Chad would, I think they had a standing a cliff, cliffy rule where if it looked like he might be slow to get up or something, you know, somebody run on in there. And it was always like, oh, are we putting a left tackle now? But without, like I mentioned earlier, he's just got such an easy way about him. You don't really worry a whole lot uh, um, about him uh, feeling comfortable. Now, you know, I think with anybody playing over there besides Dave, you want to get them comfortable starting the game. And we'll have two rookies playing uh, as well. So. You know, want them to feel as comfortable as possible uh, starting out that game. So we got to be smart about, uh, you know, about some of the first uh, first things we're we're doing. Aaron, you, you talk a lot about situational football. You got last year. You guys were one of the best in the league on third down. You were historically the best in the league in the red zone. How do you how do you maintain that? How do you how do you stay up there heading into the, you know, this year? Well, you know, there's a lot of onus on the guys who are making the bulk of that plan to keep coming with some great ideas. Uh, best thing is we got great communication about uh, about the red zone and the or the gold zone, as you guys know, and the and third down. 
uh, Getsy does a lot of third down stuff as far as initial ideas. And obviously, Hack does the red zone. I thought they did a really nice job last year of mixing the uh, simple with the uh, uh, schematically creative. And it's a matter of execution, too. We stayed out of a lot of the third and long stuff, which are low percentage across the entire league. And so we did a better job, if you look at 19 to 20, better job on first and second down, which allowed us to be a lot better on third down. Red zone just comes down to execution. And when you got uh, two guys with you know double-digit touchdowns, it makes it difficult for defenses to try and figure out who they're going to try and focus on in the red zone. There was a practice uh, leading up to the final preseason game against the Bills where you had to move inside. And I watched you and Devontae work a lot on the sidelines talking about things, and then he was sort of featured in the next drive in the red zone. And it made me wonder, the way this team is at now, third year with before these veterans that you've got, and the structure of that camp, were you guys ever work on more creative things toward the end of this camp, heading into the season, that bye week from last year? Yeah, the schedule was definitely a little bit different than in years past. Last year, we had that kind of that build-up period, which a lot of us older guys really enjoyed. Uh, this year, we didn't have that. And now we get it on the back end, right after final uh, cutdowns. And we had those three days um, between this week, a game week, and the last preseason game. So it was important that we worked on specific things we wanted to see maybe in the first quarter of the season, um, although the math is a little off now because there's 17, not 16 games. But um, I don't know what 4 seventeenths is exactly to the uh, you know thousandth decimal point. but. Um, I'm assuming it's you know between 22.2 and 25, so you know somewhere in there you know we have uh, 23 point what five six something blah blah blah. Um, it's important that we worked on some stuff that, that uh, is going to be displayed in these first four weeks. I think we have to be a little more creative with uh, as the team gets into. Uh, this third year in the system to kind of keep guys uh, dialed in every every week in practice. Um, you can only imagine how that is when you have guys in seven, eight, nine, tenth year in the systems as we did with Mike. We're always trying to reinvent things to kind of keep guys dialed into what we're doing. And I think Matt and Hackett did a good job of that during training camp of really working on some um, out of the box ideas throughout training camp. Speaking of Devontae, you obviously, we obviously know how you feel about him, but on the other hand, we spent a lot of time this camp talking about the improved depth in that room overall. Has that depth improved enough to, to take some targets off of Devontae, to, to have it more evenly dispersed in, in the passing game, or is, or is it still you got to force feed him even if he's, you know, he's Devontae? Yeah, I mean, I've never felt like we force fed anybody around here. I think we just throw it to the open guy. Tay for a long time has been more open than just about everybody else way more often. Um, I do like the other guys and the way they've developed. Talked at length about uh, Marquez and Allen and having Randall back is, is huge because he can play three positions for us. Um, and then Robert Tanyan's development. So you know, I don't know. It just depends on how teams are going to play us. Uh, we have a unique uh, skill set of guys where we have you know, extremely fast guy in Marquez, a guy who can do it all, and Devontae Randall, who's an elite slot receiver, uh, Allen, who can play inside and outside and be a good blocker at the point of attack, um, Robert, who's become a lot better blocker and also, you know, an elite uh, pass catcher, and a big dog who does enough in the pass game to warrant, uh, you know, him being out there for a number of plays and dominating the line of scrimmage. So I love the versatility of those guys and the depth that we have, and I feel good about. Uh, you know, different things we can throw at teams, and especially if they try and take uh, Devontae away the entire game. Aaron, you walked us through some of your openers and what they meant to you. Ten years ago, Randall Cobb made his debut with an opener against the Saints. As you think back on that, what comes to mind? Have you noticed anything special for him this week in terms of how excited he is for the new start with the Packers? Yeah, for sure. You know, I think the first uh, preseason game at home was special for both of us. Uh, you know, kind of getting the chills during the anthem, remembering the last time we were on that field. Uh, luckily, his face was captured in that picture because mine was doing the same uh, kind of ugly cry face uh, in, in 2018 against the Lions. Uh, he's obviously really happy to be back. Been spending a lot of time with him and his uh, 
his awesome wife and their two young kids. So it's just really special to have him back. He's uh, definitely not taking it for granted and, and savoring every single moment. I remember that night, uh, the incredible kick return that he had. Uh, it was one of those uh, no, 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 yes situations. Uh, he's bringing it out from eight deep and kind of making a move on the 10 yard line. Looks like he almost got tackled there. Corey, uh, Corey Hall actually, I believe was on the Saints at that point and trying to make a tackle. And I think Kuhn kind of held him up a little bit. Um, and then I checked to Randall running a flat. Uh, he was in the slot. He decided to run a slant instead against pressure, beat uh, the defender across his face. I kind of adjusted to it and hit him. And that's when he dove in the end zone for his uh, second touchdown. So it's a big night for for Kabi, and you knew, you knew in training camp there was something special there, but you knew when the lights came on and that it wasn't too big for him, and that was the beginning of a really special career for him. Yeah. 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 expectations going? Uh, we talked about how there are two rookies on the offensive line. What have you seen from Josh Myers since you wanted to make adjustments with him in the training camp to where you guys are as you get ready for the season? Yeah, I think he's he's. He's grown every single week, and we've took him through some situations that are going to come up in the games. And he's made some mistakes, but he's learned from those mistakes. And there's been a lot of really valuable reps in those situations. Uh, there's going to be some unscouted looks that we're going to see. There's going to be some unscouted things that he hasn't seen from me before in a game. So we're going to have to work through them together. It's much like when Corey took over uh, as a young player. Uh, there's going to be a couple growing pains for sure. but. I like his disposition. I like his steadiness. He wants to do it right. He, he learns from his mistakes. And I think he's had a really nice camp for a guy to step in uh, after not being around me the entire off season and having two kind of new guys next to him. I think he's done a really nice job. Now, there's going to be some growing pains, but uh, he learns learns quickly. And that's a good thing for a center. Aaron, having high expectations going into a season are nothing new around these parts. Does it feel different this year just because of the unknown of what comes beyond this season? Yeah, it does. It definitely does. Uh, there is a lot of unknowns. Um, I've talked about it various uh, various times throughout camp, uh, people's uh, contracts and situations uh, down the line. Um, so the right perspective is needed, I think, for all of us. Um, I think we don't feel pressure. Uh, I'm speaking personally, I can't speak for everybody, but I, the, the feel that I get with the energy in the locker room is not pressure, it's uh, focus. I really do. I think it's the right perspective and the right type of focus. Uh, we know we have a talented team. We know what the expectations are. Um, we're just focusing on accountability and holding each other accountable uh, because regardless of what happens with any of our situations, this group will not be together the way it is now in years down the line. So we're going to enjoy this year for all it has to offer at each other. And I think that's the right perspective to have in, in, in this situation. How are you able to stay focused and not feel that pressure? How do you kind of manage to keep that level-headed approach? How difficult is that? Uh, I'm old. I mean, I've been around a long time in this league. I've seen a lot of ball. and. You know, I've learned uh, how to channel my energies and my focus to things that uh, get me in the right headspace, uh, perspective-wise. Um, you know, the stuff I do off the field, uh, the meditation uh, helps a lot too. But um, you know, I try and pass that stuff on as well. We had a nice uh, conversation with some of the rookies uh, on Monday, and the message is what the accountability is and the expectations are. And also how to navigate, you know, this year. And it's a good reminder for all of us uh, the challenges that we all face, whether we're a first-year player or a 17th-year player, in staying in the moment, staying present, staying positive, staying focused on what you have to do, not making the moment bigger than it actually is. Um, so that's what I really like about this team. There's there's great communication, not just about ball, but about um, all the other things that kind of go into being a professional and. and being able to have the right type of performance uh, throughout the week and then on game day. Aaron, you're talking about that perspective of not making things bigger than they are. I, when Bakhtiari had his first start it was against the Niners team week one, they had gone to the Super Bowl. Corey Lindsay had his first start in Seattle coming off that Super Bowl win. 
I remember those weeks we made a big deal of leading in, but those guys performed pretty admirably in the bottom of the storyline after. How do you uh, how do you advise your rookies to then approach this one on the offensive line that hopefully has so much to do? Yeah, that's a good question. I think the, the most important thing is to make all of the reps that we have in, in walkthroughs and practice game-like in nature. And obviously, the tempo at certain times won't be game-like. But the urgency and the decision-making and the, uh, the rapid uh, approach to their, their job is most important. I need them to feel what it's going to feel like on Sunday at 4.30 um, when we're in those situations. The swiftness of the adjustments, the uh, strain of a clock, maybe play clock that's that's down inside five. So a lot of these situations that have come up throughout camp and this week, whether intentionally or unintentionally, is real good uh, kind of dry runs for what it's going to be like on Sunday. Hey, Aaron, um, you talked about the vibe you get from the locker room, and you talked a lot about being focused on being in the present, but there's the last dance aspect of this. There's the off season and having a great camp and the not playing in the season. Where are you personally? How do you feel and how are you getting ready for embarking on this journey personally, not knowing what's next? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm in a good headspace. Uh, it's been a lot of uh, uh, contemplation throughout the off season. And I think any time you go in where there's an opportunity for growth, uh, doesn't always happen, but there's there's definitely an opportunity. I feel like I've uh, made the most of, of those opportunities that presented themselves. Um, for me, it's constantly about habitual change and the things that I'm trying to accomplish, uh, being intentional about accomplishing those things. It's not just all you know diet related or sleep related. It can be uh, communication related and how you want to have interactions with certain people and being intentional about those things. I said it yesterday. You know, some of the stuff that I've read about habits taking, you know, a few weeks to form. You have to be intentional about those things uh, in order for those to really stick. And it's not, like I said, it's not just, you know, I'm going to wake up at 6.20 every day. And, and, you know, by the time I get to the 21st day, then I'm going to feel like that's a normal. It's, it's more than that. It's, it's how I want to communicate with certain players. Um, throughout the season and being very intentional about what those conversations look like on a daily basis and a weekly basis. You're attaching uh, events or conversations to certain days of the week. And by the time you get into this thing, it becomes the norm and the natural and allows you to kind of be present within those weeks. I think that's the most important thing for me as an older player is to, is to not that, let the routine become mundane, but to let the normal become opportunities for growth within the structure of the routine. So how Two more in here. Is your leadership style with your teammates becoming then? Because it's not like you were a crummy leader before. It's something you prided yourself on. But it sounds like you're kind of re revamping your approach in some ways. Yeah, I think you have to. I mean, you have to. The age gap gets different every single year. Um, I think it's understanding how your energy directly affects the people around you and being very mindful of the desired uh, outcome with every interaction. So everything from Matt and I in our conversations to uh, MVS and I having conversations to John and I having conversations to Devante and Big Dog, who we have you know as much conversations as anybody. What uh, is the desired result from those situations um, and how can I be intentional enough to get the message across to them so that we can be the voice uh, to the entire team. I think that's the biggest thing with, with uh, leadership is, is empowerment. And how can I, as a leader on the football team and the oldest guy on the team, the longest tenured, how can I empower those guys who are kind of right below me as far as experience and uh, accomplishment to lead uh, in ways that best helps us achieve our, our goals? Aaron, it's pretty common with young players to talk about their development year one to year two, going into year three. What, I'm curious with, with Matt as a guy who was never a head coach before a couple of years ago, what are you seeing with his development year one, year two, going into year three? How, how different is he, with, especially with the success that, that he's had in, in his role, that how different is he now from, from two years ago from what you've seen? He's a lot different. Um, 
and I say that with a, a ton of love and respect. Uh, yeah, I remember the first time he broke down a meeting, he said, ready, break. And we all got a ribbon, I'm teasing about that. Um, he's, uh, he's so much more comfortable in his own skin, I think, as, as the front man, as the guy talking every single day. It's tough, it's a tough job. You know, I know it to some extent because trying to come up with something inspirational or motivational every single day can be, uh, can be tough. Not want to be monotonous or cliche ridden, but I've seen him uh, continue to grow every single year. Uh, Matt is uh, such an interesting uh, person. Um, he's such a perfectionist, and I can relate to that and, and have been around some great perfectionists over the years. Jeff Tedford was one at, at Cal and pushed me to be my best. Uh, but as perfectionists, we're also very hard on ourselves. There's a standard that we will never be able to meet. Um, and understanding that in myself and wanting to, uh, to not hold myself to a standard that doesn't allow me to enjoy and have satisfaction in what I've accomplished, I've been trying to help him as much as I can to be a little gentler with himself because he's such a smart, creative person. And he does a great job in front of the room. And he comes with some amazing ideas every single week. Uh, but as a perfectionist, sometimes you never feel like you're adding up or you're just you're missing something or something's not quite where it should be. Um, luckily, we got myself to remind him uh, he's doing a great job and hack it to keep everybody loose the entire day. Uh, but I've seen a lot of growth from Matt, and it's been fun to watch our own relationship grow. Um, you know, I, I was teasing uh, people who didn't think we'd be able to get along with my Instagram post, but... In, uh, in all seriousness, it's been a lot, of, uh, a lot of great conversations with Matt and I in his office, on the phone, FaceTimes at night. That's allowed our relationship to get to a really good point and, and to have a really solid friendship. Hey, Eric, we'll take two on Zoom here. Eric, you can go ahead. Hey, Aaron, I really appreciate your comments uh, regarding Tom Brady's uh, I guess words about the quarterback position and how it's changed and stuff about throwing over the middle of the field and I had me thinking back to your start I think it was your second year in Pittsburgh where you got rocked underneath the chin and there was no flag back then and you wave off the trainers and you guys come up just short but is that a play where you kind of take it upon yourself as a young quarterback like I got to sort this out like I can't I can't live in this league taking shots like that. Because I know Tom was referencing the shot that Justin took down there in Chicago. Is that something as a young quarterback where, man, you know, this is this is legit pain almost that I've got to try to avoid as far as knowing where my protection is supposed to be, adjustments of the line. Did that, does that, as a young quarterback, hurry up the process of wanting to learn? Yeah, I mean, I got hit twice that game early, I think both by Lawrence Timmons, uh, if, I, if I remember correctly. Uh, one really uh, rocked me. Protection's always been an important part of, uh, of the passing game and understanding when you're hot and when you're not hot. Uh, in that situation, uh, one of them we should have been protected, and, and as I remember, and one of them, uh, you know, we were hot. So I was holding as long as I could, and I think I tried to hit Jermichael on that play uh, where I got uh, absolutely creamed. But, that's a situation, you know, I remember the game uh, very well. You know, we hit, uh, hit James on a shake there late in the game to go ahead and, and look like we were going to win that thing and then gave up a touchdown there with no time left at the clock and the, they see in the far side of the end zone to Mike Wallace, I believe it was. Um, I think the point that Tom was making is about the quality of play in the league. And I agree with what he said. You know, I think there's, there's, there's got to be some onus on the quarterback. Um, to not, you know, lay your teammates out. And I meant what I said about a fear. You know, I always had a fear of, of laying a guy out or a guy not being able to walk off the field. Um, you know, had that, uh, seen it three times, I believe. Uh, Terrence Murphy back in 2005 on a kickoff. Uh, Nick Collins, I believe it was 2011. And then uh, Jermichael in 2013, you know. Uh, I was a part of the Jermichael one. I remember I threw him a slant. Um, and I think it was T.J. Ward uh, drilled him, um, you know, on a weird, strange hit. Uh, your biggest fear as a quarterback is, is laying a guy out and him not being able to, uh, to walk off the field, just like I'm sure an offensive lineman's greatest fear is getting your quarterback ripped and him not being able to get off the field. And I think there's a, there's a lot of uh, changes that the league has made that's made it harder to play defense. Um, and uh, I'm not exactly feel sorry for him, but I think that uh, – 
you know, some of the, you know, some of the things that we, we loved about the league growing up uh, have maybe been diluted a little bit uh, because of some of the rule changes. Last one, Stacey Dale. <laughs> Hey, Sarah. Um, Aaron, just kind of a two-parter. Um, with such a big focus on your lower body that you told us about, as the perfectionist you are last year, um, was there sort of a specific area of focus for you this offseason physically? And then just curious, through your expert lens, Dennis Allen, why he's such a good defensive coordinator and how you study him? Yeah, I mean, I think the focus is you get – up over 35 has got to be more on the legs than it was at 25. Uh, and, you know, we got a great staff uh, here. I got a great workout group out of Proactive in California. And, um, you know, we did a lot of uh, single leg stuff, a lot of balance, pro perception. Um, so I'm, I feel good about where my body's at. Just kind of continuing the stuff I've done the last couple of years, my squatting in season. Um, I feel like really helped me get my legs back after my 2018 injury. As far as Dennis goes, he's a great coach. You know, he's been around for a long time. He's run a very similar system that's adjusted slightly over the years based uh, mostly on the back end, some of the stuff that they've done. But, uh, you know, he's not afraid to bring pressure. Uh, last year they pressured us a bunch. I think up around 50% in the game we played, less in the other games. So he, he does a really nice job of attacking your protection schemes. Good job with having his guys have vision to the football. He's obviously got a number of talented, talented guys on the back end. Um, you know, beginning with uh, with Demario, I think in the middle, kind of makes that whole thing go. Uh, but Malcolm's been around forever and is, is a super talented player. So smart, smart guys up front. A really good scheme. A lot of things they throw at you, and they test your protection uh, in every single every single set. So that's what makes it difficult. Hey, Aaron, do you remember Marquez asking for your jersey after the Buffalo game? I don't remember that. I actually, I, I squared him up in the locker room nicely. <laughs> I said, I said, that's the story you're going to go with on day one, huh? <laughs> I don't remember that. It would have been a no either way, though. <laughs>